Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 21 to 25 of the Grey Kangaroo from 2021. The pink and the grey kangaroos are follow-on rounds from the UKMT Intermediate Maths Challenge. So if you do really well in the Intermediate Maths Challenge, then you can go on to take the kangaroo. You will do the grey kangaroo if you're in year 9 in England or equivalent years elsewhere, and you will do the pink kangaroo if you're in years 10 uh, or 11. And there are also uh, Olympiad rounds you can qualify for as well, the Cayley, Hamilton and McLaurin papers, again for each of those three uh, different year groups if you do very well in the math challenges. So these questions are kind of a harder version of IMC papers, so they are also great preparation if you're taking the Intermediate Maths Challenge. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put all of these questions uh, as well as the solutions and also some video hints into free online courses that you can sign up for by clicking down below. There are courses for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, for Junior, Senior Challenges as well and for the Kangaroos and you can take those courses, you can try the questions uh, you can have a look at the hints, you can check your answers before you watch the video solutions and it's really the best way to use this content to prepare for the challenges. Unlike here on YouTube there are no ads or distra distractions over there as well and there are upgraded courses, go for gold in math challenges where you can really master the content and get well prepared uh, for the math challenges if you want to uh, but the free courses are really substantial and really useful and you can get a lot just by doing those as well so I really encourage you to click on the link below and to sign up for one of those courses now. If you'd rather stay here on YouTube, of course you're very welcome. Um, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get the content out there. Um, so let's get on uh, with these questions now. So quite a tricky question to visualize this one. We want to go from P to Q in the diagonal and see how many of the smaller uh, cubes that we pass through along the way. So you know what happens, what do I go through as I go from here to here? And I think a really useful way of thinking about this is to start with a slightly simpler problem and say just imagine uh, rather than going from P to Q we just wanted to go from uh, P to this corner point here and we could simply count how many squares or how many cubes we would pass through here right there's one two three four five six um, seven uh, eight that we would pass through but more importantly than the number here I want to think about the logic right so to go from the left to the right here, I have to move horizontally through squares one, two, three, four times, right? and I also have times where I move vertically once here, uh, once here, and once here. So the number of squares that we move through here is kind of made up of one plus these four horizontal moves plus these three vertical moves, right? And effectively. You know, every time. So, if you think about it, every time you exit a cube, you have to exit in some direction, either horizontally or vertically. Here, now, if I extend this and say, okay, I actually also want to go sort of depthways in here and go to Q, then at some point, right? If I was, let's just imagine I was going across the top here, right? At some point, I'd have to go in this direction two times as well, because I'd start here, and there will be a couple of times where the move is in those two directions. Now, it doesn't affect the moves that we've already talked about on the front here, right? At some point, I move in this direction twice, um, but uh, and so rather than moving from like you know uh, this square to this square when I go horizontally, right? It might be that I am actually moving from the equivalent one to layer back, uh, but the total is still going to be the same. So all I need to do is add two to this, and that will give me the answer for the number of squares uh, that we get then. Uh, that gives me 10, and so the answer here is C. So let's draw a distance time graph here just to visualize what's going on. I think it's helpful to kind of tell this story uh, with a bit of a graph. So we'll start with um, Lewis, right? And, I, and okay, so just to be clear, I've got time on this axis, and I'm thinking that we're going to start at Acaster and go to B Town uh, somewhere up here. And what's Lewis doing? Um, he goes at a constant 70 kilometers per hour from A to B okay and uh, so he goes a journey a bit like this and then he's going to stay there for an hour right um, and I don't know how far it is so I don't know how the scales are here but it doesn't really matter at the moment um, and then he's going to come back from B to A at the same speed so this line is going to have the same um, gradient but negative and 
Uh, so this is kind of what Lewis is doing. Right? Now, what does Geraint do? Well, Geraint goes at a slower speed, and um, so he's just going to be going directly uh, from A to B. He's going to get there at some point, and we're told that they meet at some point when Lewis is on his way back, right? So, um, so it must mean so there's some time here where they meet. And in particular, we're told that this is 105 kilometers from B Town, right? So whatever this distance uh, here, here, here is, this is 105. And if we say x is the total distance from A to B, then this distance, you know, uh, so this is 105, then you know this point here will be uh, x minus 105, right? Let's actually label that as x minus 105, uh, like that, okay? So what I want to do is to write down an equation that expresses this point here in uh, two different ways. Okay, so it's the time Lewis took, and it's also the time Geraint took, right? So we've got uh, speed equals distance over time, of course. You should memorize that for the math challenges. And so we know that we can rearrange that to give time equals distance over speed. Okay, so uh, so let's write Lewis's time, right? Uh, Lewis's time to the meeting point equals Geraint's time. That's going to be the equation we're trying to write down. Right, so Lewis's time, well, he goes uh, x distance at 70 kilometers per hour for the first part here. So that's x divided by 70. Distance over speed is time. Then waits for one uh, hour. Okay, so uh, as one for this period where he stopped, and then he's going to go this distance. Right, which is 105 at 70 kilometers per hour, and then he's going to meet Geraint. Geraint's going to take the same time, but he's just going to go this distance x minus 105 at a speed of 30. So that's his time. So now I've got an equation that I can solve to find x. So multiplying it all through by 210, because that's the lowest common multiple of 70 and 30 to clear out the fractions, I'm going to get here a 3x plus 210. Um, and then this one uh, multiplied by 3 as well, so plus 315. And this is going to be 7 times x minus 105, so 7x minus 735. So you've got to be good at solving your equations with fractions here. So we get 3x plus 525 is equal to 7x minus 735. And so we get here uh, 4x is 525 plus 735, which is 1260. And so dividing 1260 by 4, uh, well, 1200 divided by 4 is 300, 60 divided by 4 is 15, so that's 315 kilometers. And it must be that the distance here is A, 315 kilometers. So let's think about these koalas. Uh, the most important thing we have to notice here is uh, that this uh, thing that says three consecutive koalas are always of all three different colors has a really big implication, right? So because let's say I've got uh, the first one is red, um, then the next two have to be uh, white and blue in, in some order, right? So let's say it's blue and then white, right? But now when I look at the next set of three, well, I've got a blue and a white, so the next one must be red to make sure there's one of each. And then I've got a white and a red, so the next one must be blue. And if you keep making this uh, logic, what it means is that there must be a repeating pattern, red, blue, white, red, blue, white, red, Blue, white, or it could be like red, white, blue, red, white, blue. You know, it doesn't you know? But but it must repeat, right? Um, and so, uh, so if I think about sort of numbering the koalas uh, in order, okay. I'm oh, sorry about that. If I think about numbering the koalas in order. Okay, so uh, you know, it, it might go like red, white, blue, red, white, blue. Right, I don't know which colors they are at the moment, but let's just so let's just call it you know x y z, x y z for the different colors, right? Now, just like you know, even and odd numbers, you know, you have even numbers are of the form two n, and odd numbers are of the form two n plus one. Um, it's quite convenient to do this with multiples of three, right? So three here is of the form three n, where n is a whole number. Four would be three n plus one. Five would be three n plus two. And then when I get to six again, it's back to three n. Okay, it's three n plus three as well, but I can, you know, uh, so here here n is one, and then here n is two but it's of the form 3n, right? So the point here is, right, that the numbers like, uh, you know, 3, 6, 9, etc., the multiples are multiples of 3, we can we can sort of treat those as one type of number, 
the three ends. The three n plus ones are going to be one, four, seven, uh, ten, etc. These are going to be of the form three n plus one, and the uh, numbers uh, two, five, eight, etc. are going to be of the form three n plus two. And each of these classes must all be the same color, right? Because of this repeating sequence, right? So let's think about the predictions. We've got koala two is white, right? Well, koala two two is in the class three n plus two. Right, it's three times zero plus two. Um, twenty being blue, well, twenty is eighteen plus two, so that's also three uh, n plus two. So twenty blue is in this class. Actually, we can see already one of these must be the wrong one because uh, they've both got to be the same color. Let's have a look at the others. Two hundred and two. Um, well, two hundred and one is a multiple of three. Remember that digit sum test. If the digits add up to a multiple of three, the numbers a multiple of three. Um, so 202 must be uh, in the 3n plus 1 group. Um, so that one uh, is going to have the guess that 202 is red. 1002 is a multiple of 3. So uh, 1002 being blue is in here. And 2021 uh, is white. Uh, that adds to 5. So that's 2 more than a multiple of 3. Because um, you can check if you want then that... Um, sorry, no. Um, well, 2022 is certainly a multiple of 3, isn't it? Because um, the digits add up to 3, so 2021 is uh, 3n plus 2 again. So uh, that one being 2022 white right, is, is the guess there. So what have we got? Well, we need each of these groups to all have the same colour, right? So we know one of these has to be wrong. Um, so it must it's fairly clear now that you know these ones must be red, these ones must be blue. And it's this one that's wrong because I've got both of these being white and uh, then everything works. So the incorrect guess must be uh, B20. So each of these six teams is playing uh, a game in each round. So in round one, P is playing Q, and so uh, we must have R, S, T, and U playing you know, the other games here. So there's going to be in round one, three games, in round two, three games, etc. And we know all of the, uh, the, the televised um, fixtures, so we know one of the fixtures from each round. Now, we know here, um, if we look at this, we've got more information about P than about the other teams. Right? We've got three of P's matches here that are being televised. So P has already scheduled to play Q, T, and R, so that just leaves uh, teams S and U for it to play. And it must play them in rounds two and four, because we know they're rounds one, three, and five games. But S is already playing in round two, and U is playing already in round four, so it must be that P plays U in round two and P plays S in round four. Now the fact that we know two of the fixtures in round two of course means that we know the third one because all six teams have to play. So we've got P but Q hasn't played, R, S and T hasn't played. So it must be Q versus T here. And similarly in this one, um, this must be Q against R. They're the only teams that are missing. So it should be not too hard to fill in the rest from here, I guess. Um, so let's look at the next ones. So okay, I can now see I've got similar sort of logic here. Right? I've got three T's. We know we know all of those games, um, and uh, T has played P, Q, and U, and so they've just got um, uh, R and S uh, left to play. But R is already playing here, so I guess T must play S in this round, and T must play R in this round. And that leaves here uh, S against U for the final uh, match in this round. And in fact, we can stop there because we know Team S will play against Team U um, in round one. Um, of course, if you want to uh, fill the rest in, we can certainly do that from here. Um, S against T would, have, would leave Q against U. And the other matches in round three then... Um, well, uh, we know we've still got to put Q in here, and the only team Q haven't played here out of the others is S, and that would leave R against U, and you can double check that that all works if you want to. Um, but for a math challenge, of course, you can stop as soon as you know where uh, this match is. To help make things clear, I've made a bigger copy of this picture and just deleted the numbers out of this copy of it. Uh, so the key here is that the labeled points divide the sides of the large quadrilateral into three equal parts. So um, it looks a bit weird at first this picture I think when you think about okay, what are these dots doing and where are they but they're just you know spaced out equally along the sides right so I could if I wanted to you know add 
extra dots here and maybe now it looks a bit more like these are kind of nice equal spacings uh, along the diagram here. So quadrilaterals not so easy to work with here um, we're going to have to add some extra lines into this picture uh, to get going for sure and so what I want to do here is to uh, I'm definitely going to add some uh, extra lines in here uh, and here and what you can see is that now I can look at this orange triangle and I can say well okay if I take this as the base and this is the perpendicular height right well let's say you know this has a certain you know length here then this whole length is three times a so this would be 2a right so the base of like just this triangle is double the base of this triangle but they have the same perpendicular height so the area of this triangle is double there is double the area of this triangle okay so let's just give this a name let's call this one x and 2x and now let's do the same uh, for the other sides so if I put another triangle in here this green one we can do exactly the same along here right like this length is a half of this length because it's a third of the way along again so whatever this is let's call it y this one is double it and if I keep going around um, I can do the same thing over here and if I make a triangle uh, like this then again uh, this point is a third of the way along so this if I call this one z then let's make this one 2z um, and then finally we can uh, put one more in uh, on the other side here and uh, I don't need any extra lines here but this triangle oh I've run out of letters x y z uh, I suppose we'll use w um, so if this is w then this is 2w all right and now let's write down these areas right we want to what we're looking for is this which is x we want x plus w actually this is a bit hard w is a bit hard to see let me write it in black as well w and 2w um, and what we've got like this a this being 18 means that 2x plus 2y is equal to 18 right this being 8 well that's these two here so that's y plus z equals 8 um, right this being 10 is 2z plus 2w let's write 2w plus 2z is equal to 10 and um, that's this is all this information that we've got right so uh, so what can we see here well let's combine the ones that have the twos in them so I've got 2x plus 2y plus 2w plus 2z adding those together is 10 plus 18 which is 28 and then we've got y plus z e equals 8 and x plus w is what we're looking for um, okay well actually, I suppose it makes sense to divide this all through by 2 before I do anything else so uh, let's, let's write them in order as well w plus x plus y plus z is 14 then and I also know that y plus z is equal to 8 so you see if I subtract y plus z from uh, here right so if I subtract this equation from this equation all I'm going to be left with is w plus x right so that must be 14 minus 8 and 14 minus 8 is 6 and so the answer to this question is 6 very hard question as we'd expect at the end of a kangaroo paper so uh, very well done if you got that right so I really hope you found this video useful don't forget if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges you can find links uh, in the descriptions below uh, click there and sign up to those now no payment details required uh, nothing like that so you can sign up totally free of charge there are some up upgraded courses as well with some extra content if you really want to master the challenges you can sign up for those as well but there's loads over there uh, for free so i really hope that i will see you over there soon